Hello, I am P. Irene Green and I am a native Washingtonian and currently I uh, serve as a HUD certified housing counselor here in the District of Columbia. Washington DC has changed a lot since being here. I've spent the past 40 something years uh, living in Anacostia and I have seen the transition from what it was. Um, I started living in Anacostia with my mom when I was uh, in the fifth grade on my way to the sixth grade and attended Orr Elementary School. It's now called Boone Elementary School. But when I started going, it was called Orr Elementary School. And Mr. Boone was actually the principal of Orr Elementary School. I left Orr Elementary School, went to Kramer Junior High School, which is now Kramer Middle School. And then I left Kramer junior high school and I uh, went to H.D. Woodson Senior High School where I graduated in 1979. So I've been out of high school for quite some time. I left H.D. Woodson Senior High School and did my first three years of undergrad at Howard University and then transferred to the University of Maryland where I obtained a bachelor's degree in healthcare management and a master's degree in healthcare administration. So I've lived all of my adult life here in Washington, D.C. and have loved every minute of it. I was a teacher at Eastern Senior High School here in Washington, D.C. And as a teacher, I, I was actually a long-term substitute teacher to be specific. Um, and I was a principal select long-term substitute teacher. And I covered uh, students who academically struggled and one thing I noticed, I, I, I was assigned to a ninth grade English class. And I noticed that when I was given in, giving instruction, that the students struggled with some of the vocabulary that was in the text that they were reading. And I thought if I could help strengthen their understanding, comprehension of the words that they were reading, then it, it would make reading the narratives much easier for them. And so I began to start working with students in terms of sentence structure, grammar, and then vocabulary. And I found that my students were very interested in improving their vocabulary and would share and use some of the vocabulary that they learned in my class in other classes. And I was told that they were using them and even some of the teachers were asking them, okay, so what does that word mean? Um, and so they were, they were learning, but they were also willing to share. And so my motivating factor, or motivation behind writing the book that I have written, The Inspired Vocabulary, was to address some of the angst that many inner city and urban students have with reading. And I discovered, and even personally, it's not that our students or students in our community don't want to read or don't like to read. It's students like to read what they like to read. As adults, we like to read what we like to read. We don't like to read those topics and subjects that are not interesting to us. And so once we provide students with one, vocabulary so that when they are reading text, when they're reading narratives, they don't get stumped by a word. Because once they get stumped by a word, then their comprehension of the entire text is limited. I am a teacher by nature. That is one of my giftings. And I'm teaching, have taught professionally, but also in everyday life. I'm currently a housing HUD certified housing counselor and every day I'm teaching uh, individuals prospective home buyers how to manage their money how to budget their money people who have never seen their credit report people who are afraid to look at their credit report uh, individuals who don't know how to manage their their credit they don't know how to manage their money academically working with young people who are afraid to read don't typically doesn't like to read I've gone and I've, I've shared with individuals and they come back and they say, thank you. They come back and they say, I didn't know that. They come back and they say, oh my goodness, I feel like I can go to the next level. I feel like I can be a homeowner because now I have an understanding of my credit. Now I have an understanding of 
managing my money. Now I can do it. And so my motivation and my satisfaction is derived from teaching others and enlightening others and even more so empowering others to make better decisions, better quality decisions in their lives so that they can in turn share with either their children or their other you know, family members that they might know. It's very important, each one teach one. That's very important, very critical because the more you know, the better quality decisions that you make. When people think of me, they think of professionalism, they, and they think of education, they think of, of knowledge, they think of information. And when people walk away, when my clients walk away from our conversation, our counseling sessions, they walk away empowered. So clients who, or individuals who, never thought they could own a home, realize now I know it's not as hard as I thought it was. And there's nothing more satisfying than thinking that something is going to be difficult or that you are not going to be able to do something when all you need is just a little nudge, all you need is a little information, all you need is someone who can show you the way. And then you can essentially feed yourself and then you can you know make the necessary moves and the necessary tweaks that you need to make in order to accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish and so at this stage and age in my life now I know that it's more than just about what I can do for me but it's also how I can help to better the lives of others, how I can make other people's lives because we're all attempting to make our mark in the world. And when we have someone who has impacted us, it's our job, our role, our responsibility to impact the lives of others. My family knows I am very family oriented. Family is very important to me. I just discovered my father's side of the family uh, in 2018 and that was life changing for me because I discovered that I was living near family and didn't, on my father's side of the family, and did not even know it. I, I discovered that a at Eastern Senior High School working with an assistant principal there, I'm actually his wife's cousin and just found that out. Um, and so it's been life changing to, to nurture yourself, to, for there to be a balance, for there to be a balance, it's very, very important for there to be a balance in life. And so your purpose is not only going to impact you, but it's going to also impact your family and those around you that you care about. And so now I know that all of that is intertwined, your personal life, your spiritual life, your educational life, your physical life, all of that is intertwined and if our we have all the money in the world and we don't invest in the people that we love and the people that we care about we are also denying ourselves that emotional balance that emotional nutrition if you will it's critically important and so i purposely uh, spend time with my family i purposely make my family a priority so that even when things get a little um, hectic, life gets a little hectic in other areas of my life, I always have my, my family, uh, my husband, my mom, my cousins, um, and I think about that group and it just makes me feel good, it makes me feel better, uh, and it takes me to a place of solace. And so I wanna encourage you that if you don't have a good relationship with your family, no matter what happened, it's just not worth it. It's not worth holding on to grudges. It's not worth um, hashing over what may have happened, regardless of whose fault it was, whatever. The pandemic has taught us that it's just not worth it because somebody can be here today and truly gone today or gone tomorrow, and it's just not worth it. Just let bygones be bygones and move forward. Keep it moving. I would like to say, be true to your, to you, be true to your authentic self, live your truth and ensure that you are including other people in that. Being strong, being nurturing, 
because when we all close our eyes for the last time, you want to be known for, we want to be known for what we deposited into the lives of those who we interacted with. Because we leave people, not what we have, but we leave people who we are.